بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين. Uh, I am Rami Ahmed, uh, special envoy on the SDGs and uh, special advisor to the president of the Islamic Development Bank. And uh, it's my pleasure really to be the moderator today. Welcome to the third to the third seminar of the Global Dialogue on Islamic Social Finance. Today's seminar is on the Islamic social finance and as a mean to achieving the SDGs. Of course, uh, this seminar uh, is only one in a series of seminars uh, as part of the global dialogue on the Islamic social finance, which was launched uh, last Ramadan by the two co-leader organizations, the United Nations and the Islamic Development Bank. Her Excellency, Ms. Amina Muhammad, the Deputy Secretary General, and His Excellency, Dr. Bandar Hajjaj, the President of the Islamic Development Bank, launched the dialogue on May 11 in the presence of Dr. Mahmoud Muhyiddin, the Special Envoy on Financing the SDGs, and Dr. Rula Deshti, the Executive Secretary of ESQUA, and uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Ahmed al murikhi who played a central role in conceiving this dialogue and we are pleased to have him with us today. Uh, today uh, is the third one after two successful seminars. And the idea of all these seminars is really to entice the intellectual debate about the subject and to see how we can operationalize, operationalize many of the noble ideas that come from the Islamic finance. But the link is really how to operationalize this and really make it a reality towards social development and achieving the SDGs in general. Hopefully, this dialogue will end up with a roadmap, uh, a practical, implementable roadmap uh, by the end of the year, as I understand, hopefully to be formally adopted and implemented, inshallah. <clears throat> Of course, the main idea is to demonstrate the wide breadth and diversity of the Muslim world and its contribution to the overall objective of uh, preserving human dignity for all mankind. As you uh, know, the objectives of Sharia or what's known as Maqasid al Sharia encompasses exactly what we are uh, aiming at with its five fundamental goals preserving faith have the deen, preserving life, have the haya, progeny, have the nest, intellect, have the aql, wealth, have the man. And all these are revolving around human dignity and, full, and fully aligned with the SDGs, as we will see, inshallah, today. And as it was established in the first seminar, for those of you who followed the first seminar about the alignment with the SDGs and Islamic finance. Of course, Islamic finance is a major tool to help in achieving these objectives. The span of Islamic finance tools is very wide. Of course, the first thing that comes to the mind of many people is zakat, with all the huge resources that uh, people estimating at around $300 billion of zakat every year. But in reality, there is sadaqa, there is waqf, and other Islamic finance commercial instruments such as usharaka, murabaha, ijara, leasing, installment sale, and other uh, commercial tools to help create wealth and help in fairly distribute the wealth and uh, taking uh, and aiming at prosperity for all, really, and growth opportunity for all. In today's seminar, we will focus on how Islamic finance is aligned with the SDGs. We will listen to two experiences from two major Muslim countries, from Indonesia and Turkey, both are G20 countries, and follow up with uh, discussion. But before we do this, uh, we need to uh, pay tribute to those who are behind the scenes making this available. I will start uh, with giving the, 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 the floor to Esqua to say some welcoming words. And then we will uh, move to Dr. Ahmed al murekhi as I mentioned, who was a maestro behind this uh, global, uh, global uh, dialogue. Unfortunately, Dr. Mahmoud Muhyiddin, for reasons beyond his control, he was not able to join us today, but uh, Dr. Ahmed will, will fill in for him. 
So for us, uh, let us start by ESQUA and we thank them for all the efforts and their technical teams for making uh, all these dialogues possible. And I would like to give the floor for a couple of minutes for welcoming remarks to Mr. Uh, Tayyib Adijani. You, you are most welcome and the floor is yours perhaps on behalf of Ms. Rula Dashti, Dr. Rula Dashti, who also was with us at the launch of the uh, global uh, dialogue back in Ramadan. Uh, she was also keen on having this dialogue moving forward. Uh, Mr. Tayyib Adijani, the floor is yours, welcome. Thank you very much, Dr. Rami Ahmed. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. On behalf of you and ESQA, Dr. Rula Dashti, Dr. Mohanad al-Musawi, and the team, the translators who are working extremely hard for the past sessions, I would like to welcome you all to this third webinar on Islamic social financing as a means to achieve SDGs. This webinar follows the high-level kickoff meeting that Dr. Rami just mentioned. Uh, in which the persistent $2.5 trillion annual financing gap was ushered and which stands in the way of achieving the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs 2030. The Islamic Social Finance Dialogue first webinar included extremely important elements of the theory and applications of the CAT presented by Dr. Ali Qaradaghi and on Waqf presented by Dr. Al Ayashi Faddad. In the second seminar that preceded this one, the experience of Malaysia was thoroughly, was thoroughly examined by Dr. Qamar Zaman, in addition to a significant element of Indonesia's experience. During this webinar and throughout the presentations of the experts going forward up to December 2021, we will be examining how the Islamic social financing as a faith-based philanthropy can aid OIC member countries, disadvantaged Muslim minorities, and the various United Nations agencies achieve SDGs during this decade of action. Today, we will discuss the role of Muslim philanthropy in two G20 countries, two members of the G20 countries uh, being Turkey and Indonesia. We welcome all the participants, the speakers, and highly appreciate all your hard work and efforts. Most welcome, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tayyip. This was very nice welcoming remarks, and we appreciate the efforts of ESQUA and all the technical teams and the interpreters and everybody who is in the room and making these uh, webinars happen. Thank you very much. Before I give the floor to Dr. Murekhi, uh, he has a one-minute video. I appreciate it of the colleagues at ESQUA. Just play that uh, video before we turn it to Dr. Ahmed Gouresh. Alleviating hunger, poverty, and inequality, promoting peace, and protecting the environment are core values of the Sustainable Development Goals and basic Islamic principles. Now is the time to unlock the full potential of Islamic social financing and explore how Zakat, Sadaqa, and Waqf can help achieve the SDGs. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think, uh, Dr. Ahmed, uh, the floor is yours. It's all yours. Tafaddal, Sayyid. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Shukran, Dr. Rami, ala hadhi al-Muqaddima wa ala kadhalik al-Idara al-Lati daiman kama ant mumayyaz fiha, ma sha Allah ta'ala, wa ana sa'id anna kanta tadir hadhi al-Jansa. Kalmati sawfa tukum bil-Arabiya, lidhalik, yani, yasukum li يعني المتحدثين باللغة الإنجليزية يستمعون إلى الترجمة أصحاب سعادة سيدات والسادة الله سبحانه وتعالى طبعا قبل ما أبدأ الكلمة هذه أريد أن نرحب بكم حقيقة في الندوة وهي الندوة الثالثة من ضمن الندوات في الحوار الدولي دور التمويل الاجتماعي الإسلامي في تحقيق أهداف التنمية المستدامة حيث كانت الندوة الأولى عن أهداف التمويل الاجتماعي الإسلامي لمساعدة المجتمعات بينما تطرقت الندوة الثانية إلى آليات تنفيذ التمويل الاجتماعي الإسلامي وطبعا ندوتنا اليوم 
تتحدث عن التمويل الاجتماعي الاسلامي كوسيله لتحقيق اهداف التنميه المستدامه. كما سيلي هذه الندوات او هذه الندوه كذلك ثمان ندوات سنتطرق فيها عن تجارب تنفيذ التمويل الاجتماعي الاسلامي وقصص نجاح لدى البنك الاسلامي للتنميه وكذلك منظمات الامم المتحده. وحقيقه نحن نتطلع الاستفاده من هذه التجارب لخلق آلية دولية تعين في تحقيق أهداف التنمية المستدامة من خلال التنويل التمويل الاجتماعي الإسلامي أصحاب السعادة وسيدات والسادة الله سبحانه وتعالى خلق البشرية لمقصد فقال الله في محكم التنزيل وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون فالقصد من الخلق هو عبادة الله تعالى وقد جاءت هذه الشريعة بمقاصد ومن مقاصد الشريعة التي جاءت بها الإسلام حفظ الضروريات الخمس وهي حفظ الدين النسل وحفظ العقل وحفظ كذلك المال والناظر إلى هذه الأهداف الأهداف الثمانية أو أهداف التنمية أقصد أهداف التنمية المستدامة وحفظ الضروريات الخمس نجد أن هناك تجانس حقيقة وتكامل فيما بينها ولعلي أتطرق إلى يعني بعض الأمثلة وهنا سو اذا تسمحوا لي اشارككم بهذا السلايد الذي يبين وين تقع يعني الاهداف الانمائيه المستدامه في موقعها مع الضروريات الخمس في مقاصد الشريعه. فعلى سبيل المثال اهداف التنميه المستدامه واحد اثنين وعشره القضاء على الفقر والأمن الغذائي والقضاء على الجوع والحد من عدم المساومة المساومة المساواة تتقاسم مع حفظ النفس وحفظ الدين وحفظ المال فالهدف الأول للتنمية المستدامة هو القضاء على الفقر بحلول 2030 نجد أن الضروريات الخمس حفظ المال حيث أن الزكاة والصدقة من وسائل حفظ المال كما حفظ النفس يدخل في ذلك اما الهدف الثاني للتنميه المستدامه هو القضاء على الجوع لو نظرنا للتقارير الدوليه نجد ان وفقا لمنظمه الاغذيه والزراعه الفاو هناك ما يقارب من 800 مليون شخص يعانون من الجوع ويعانون من انعدام الامن الغذائي في حياتهم حيث تفتقر معظم البلدان الفقيره الى الموارد الاساسيه لبدء النمو والاستثمار في الصحه والتعليم آه، نقول ان الحلول العلميه المجرده لقضايا الصحه والتعليم تحل مشكله جانب العرض ولكن ليس مشكله جانب العرض لان هذه الخدمات الاساسيه يتم انتاجها وتسويقها في اقتصاد السوق العالمي على اساس تجاري. فاذا كان 70% من الناس في بلد ما قادرين على دفع سعر السوق للغذاء فعندئذ لمن يجب انتاج الغذاء؟ اي 70% من اولئك الذين يستطيعون تحمل التكاليف 100% الاجابه عن طريق اقتصاد السوق حيث اليه السعر السائد هو من الممكن تماما الحصول على توازن السوق بسعر لا يستطيع فيه الا سوى 70% من غير الفقراء تحمل تكلفه الطعام و30% غير مخدوم ما لم يحصلوا على دعم خيري او حكومي وبالتالي فان اعاده توزيع الموارد امر حيوي لتعزيز الدخل وكذلك القدره على كسب الدخل المستدام الأمر الذي يتطلب برامج دعم الدخل والصحة الأساسية والتعليم وكذلك التمويل الصغير لبناء المشاريع الصغيرة وهنا من الممكن أن يأتي التمويل الإسلامي سواء كان الوقت أو الزكاة أو القرض الحسن حيث لا يعني يدفع المقترض القرض الحسن فائدة بأي شكل من الأشكال اما اذا جينا لاهداف التنميه المستدامه مثلا ثلاثه وسته الصحه والمياه النظيفه والصرف الصحي فانه يتقاسم مع حفظ النفس حفظ العقل من الضروريات الخمس ولا يخفى عليكم ما يقرب من خمسين من الاشخاص يعيشون في فقر مقطع تبلغ اعمارهم 18 عام او اقل وهذا يوضح ان جزء كبير من السكان لن يكون لهم بدايه عادله لتحقيق الحراك الاجتماعي والاقتصادي فإن التغذية السليمة والأدوية الأساسية واللقاحات الضرورية لتجنب اعتلال الصحة وفقدان القدرات من أجل العيش المستقر أو المستقل المنتج في مرحلة البلوغ. 
تكلف بعض هذه الادويه المنقذه للحياه اقل من دولار واحد لكنها غير متوفره لاسباب تجاريه. فلو رحنا للهدف على سبيل المثال الخامس المساواه بين الجنسين وهذا يتوافق مع حفظ الدين. هنا هدف اخر مهم بالتنميه المستدامه هو المساواه بين الجنسين. نجد ان مؤسسه الزكاه محايده تماما فيما يتعلق بالنوع الاجتماعي من حيث مبادئها المتعلقه بدفع الزكاه وتلقي الزكاه. ويمكن دفع اموال الزكاه للنساء والمؤسسات التي تعمل من اجل المراه على سبيل المثال دور الولاده ومدارس الفتيات. لو جينا للهدف رقم ثمانيه على سبيل المثال العمل اللائق والنمو الاقتصادي وهو يتوافق مع حفظ المال والعمل اللائق والنمو الاقتصادي وهو اهم اهداف التنميه والتحقيق خفض مستدام للفقر وضمان الارتقاء الاجتماعي والاقتصادي. فمن ناحية يمكن أن تساعد الزكاة من الأسر التي لديها مبلغ أو لديها مال بلغ النصاب إلى الأسر التي تعاني من نقص بتوفير ذلك الدعم والدخل ويمكن استخدام التمويل الاجتماعي الإسلامي أيضا لتوفير التمويل لمؤسسات التعليم والصحة وبالتالي المساهمة في تنمية رأس المال البشري الذي يمكن أن يوفر العمل اللائق من ناحية أخرى فإن التمويل الإسلامي الاجتماعي سيضمن تداول الثروة في المشروع الإنتاجي وبالتالي توجيه رأس المال للذهاب إلى القطاع الحقيقي للاقتصاد بدلا من الجلوس في أيدي الأثرياء وهنا اسمحوا لي أختم بأن الله سبحانه وتعالى خلق الخلق وجعل الإنسان خليفة له في الأرض ليعمرها ولذا نجد أن الضروريات الخمس في مقاصد الشريعة تدور حول مصلحة الإنسان كما في الجانب الآخر نجد أن أهداف التنمية المستدامة تدور حول نفس المحور وقد جاء هذا الحوار الذي نحن بصدده وقد جاء هذا الحوار الدولي في دور التمويل الاجتماعي ليوجد آلية دولية تساهم في تحقيق أهداف التنمية المستدامة والمتوقع في نهاية هذه الندوات أن نخرج بهذه الآلية وتنفيذها ليستفيد منها من هم في حاجة ماسة للمساعدات وضمان المساواة الاجتماعية والاقتصادية وشكرا شكرا لك دكتور أحمد if you can just stop sharing the screen تكرما شكرا شكرا جزيلا على هذا العرض الضافي والمقدمة المختصرة وشكرا على جهودكم الكبيرة يعني في تحريك هذا الحوار العالمي حول التمويل الاجتماعي الإسلامي لكن الربط واضح بين مقاصد الشريعة والSDGs بشكل كبير وأشكركم على هذه المقدمة التي بعدها سنبدأ في النقاش إن شاء الله تعالى So now we start with our presentations about how Islamic finance is really aligned with the SDGs uh, from two Muslim countries, as we mentioned in the beginning, Turkey and Indonesia. Both are G20 countries. Hopefully, this also gives the, the credibility of having this at a very large scale. Uh, we start with Indonesia, the largest uh, Muslim country in terms of population. And we are pleased to have with us uh, Dr. Uh, Arfan Bey. Uh, Associate Professor of Islamic uh, Economics and Head of uh, Zakat Division in the Islamic Development Economics and Public Policy. Uh, thank you very much for being us and taking the time to uh, enlighten us about uh, the experience in Indonesia. So Dr. Arfan, welcome and the floor is yours. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rami Ahmed. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And a very wow. good morning and evening. Uh, first of all, I would like to express my gratefulness to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala because of His mercy, we can gather here in this very uh, good moment. And also, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me to share our humble experience, especially in utilizing the Islamic social finance uh, in order to achieve the sustainable development goals. Uh, distinguished panelists, uh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, uh, according to the research, and I have uh, highlighted this from the study conducted by SAC et al., that the score of Indonesia SDG index 
uh, needs to be improved. And therefore, in order to increase this SDG index score, uh, we need to utilize all uh, domestic resources that are available to us so that uh, our effort or our endeavor to achieve these SDGs can be uh, successfully done. Although we realize that in order to finance these uh, sustainable development goals uh, programs, of course, we need a huge amount of fund. And, of, uh, and also we need a comprehensive uh, policies and programs that will be implemented by all stakeholders in the country, including various government agencies and other uh, key players. So what we are doing, uh, we realize that the potential of Islamic social finance in Indonesia is uh, quite uh, very big. Yeah, it's a very huge, uh, it has a very huge potential. And if we focus on uh, Zakat and Al-Kaf, according to the study conducted by the National Board of Zakat of Indonesia through its uh, research institution, namely uh, Center of Strategic Studies. So uh, the potential of Zakat in the country reached around 327.6 trillion rupiah. Yeah, so if we convert this to US dollar, uh, it equals to around 22 billion US dollar. However, in terms of its actual collection, the collected uh, Zakat fund last year is still 5% from its potential. So uh, we see that uh, there is still a huge gap between the potential of Zakat and also its actual collection. Although for the past five years, uh, there was a tremendous growth in the uh, collection of zakat. The number of collected zakat can be increased four times uh, bigger just within uh, five years. And similarly, if you look at the wakaf uh, sector, the potential of wakaf is also uh, very big. According to the estimate made by the Indonesia Wakaf Board, which is uh, a state agency responsible to manage wakaf sector, that the valuation of existing wakaf land uh, that are already registered in our database system, uh, it is estimated that it equals to around 2 trillion rupiah. Yeah? And then we also have made an estimation that the cash wakaf potential is also reaching around 180 trillion rupiah. Yeah? So if we convert to US dollar, uh, 180 trillion, uh, I think it's uh, almost uh, more than 10 billion, yeah, almost uh, 15 uh, billion uh, US dollar. However, uh, if you look at the actual collection uh, for cash wakaf, uh, it is still half percent from its potential. So there are a lot of things, uh, there are a lot of things needed to be done by us in order to optimize uh, this uh, potential. And although uh, we are suffering the COVID-19 pandemic as well as the economic recession until the first quarter of this year, but the growth of zakat collection and uh, cash work of collection uh, is, is very good. I mean, uh, there is no uh, decrease yeah, in the collection of zakat as well as in the uh, cash work of collection. It means that our people uh, have, uh, you know, a strong belief that during these hard times, there is a need for us to help each other. And we realize the spirit to help each other through uh, the payment of zakat and wakaf. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, what we did in order to optimize this uh, Islamic social finance instrument, uh, the first thing that we did, this was in the year 2016 and 2017, we conducted a study that attempt to align the concept of sustainable development goals with the Makosid Sharia although our previous distinguished speaker has already uh, explained about the relationship between the SDGs and the Makosid Sharia, but uh, this was done in order to convince uh, all uh, strategic stakeholders of Islamic social finance in the country that our involvement in the effort to realize these SDGs goals are basically part of our mission to implement Zakat and Wakaf programs that are in line with the Makosid Sharia. That's why uh, back to 2016 and 2017, we issue 
to uh, books that uh, become our guidance. The first one is on the Fekhus Zakah on uh, SDGs. And the second one is on the studies on SDGs and Maqasid Sharia that highlight the uh, <clears throat> uh, classification of uh, sustainable development goals from the perspective of the Maqasid Sharia and what are the programs that need to be implemented to realize uh, this uh, effort uh, for us to achieve the SDGs. So after having this foundational alignment between the SDGs and the Maqasid Sharia, then we align all of our programs, both Zakat and Wakaf programs with the SDGs achievement. And we uh, made a regular report uh, regarding this matter. So how we design the Islamic social finance program uh, firstly, uh, regarding the zakat program, we classify the zakat distribution program into two parts. The first one is consumptive-based programs, which are designed to provide access to basic needs fulfillment. And we also uh, conduct the productive-based programs in order to focus on the empowerment and sustainability. Empowerment means we want to optimize the potential yeah, of the poor and the needy and other and other you know unfortunate group of people yeah so that they can be released from the poverty and when we talk about sustainability it means that we want to transform yeah we want to transform the eligible recipients of the mustahik of zakat to be the muzaki although uh, according to our latest uh, research that uh, from the program managed by the national board of zakat uh, 35 percent of the mustahik uh, that become the recipients of zakat can be released from the uh, poverty and they can be transformed into the muzaki so from being recipient now they become the donor and of course the design of both consumptive based programs and also productive based programs should serve all the 17s uh, goals of the sustainable development and for a work of program we also have designed that the contemporary program can be divided into two parts. The first one is the work of program that is uh, using the pure social approach. Yeah, no involvement of economic activities or uh, value added uh, economic value added creation in this regard. While on the second part, we also have the commercial approach uh, that uh, attempt to utilize and optimize the existing work of asset. Yeah, in order to uh, produce the maximum benefit for the Wakaf beneficiaries or the Maukuf Alay. And regarding this commercial approach, uh, it can be further divided into three models. Yeah, number one is pure business model in which we uh, try to manage uh, the Wakaf asset pure on commercial basis. Number two is uh, we combine the business and social uh, approaches. So we name it as business and social hybrid model. So basically it is commercially run, but in some of the process, uh, there, there are some social processes. For example, uh, we have an eye hospital, wakaf based eye hospital. And of course, everybody can uh, um, have uh, get the access for medical treatment, eye treatment there in the hospital, and they can pay and of course, uh, everybody will pay you have to a certain amount, but for the poor and the needy, they are not charged by any single amount. So that's why we call it as the business and social hybrid model. And the third one, we implement the financial business hybrid model in which we combine the Islamic commercial finance instrument with the Islamic social finance instruments. For example, in our case, uh, we have cash wakafling sukuk. Yeah, cash wakaf link sukuk that combines sukuk as our Islamic commercial finance uh, instrument with uh, cash wakaf, which is, you know, uh, is uh, Islamic social finance instrument. So this design helped us yeah, to further improve the optimization of this uh, existing wakaf asset. So uh, let me give you some examples of the Islamic social finance programs uh, to achieve these SDGs. Uh, the first example is on the community development. Yeah, uh, I think some of you may aware that uh, on the information that 
In Indonesia, the National Board of Zakat or Basnas has collaborated with NDP, United Nations Development Program, that launched uh, some of the zakat-based community development program as the realization of the SDGs. So in this community development program, we structure the zakat fund to emancipate a village or a region in multi-sector development, yeah, such as uh, economy, social health, education, and that one. Yeah, so our objective is to serve all the 17 goals of the SDGs. So if you look at the pictures on the right side, uh, this is an example of our joint uh, program with the UNDP that in one village in Jambi province, we interfere that village with the micro hydro power plant program because uh, there are uh, lack of the uh, electricity access. So by introducing the micro hydro power plant program, we can uh, develop the society living there. And also they have the opportunity to create you know, a value added product. Yeah, that's why creative industry program was uh, incorporated in that uh, program. And Alhamdulillah, we have produced various uh, product, yeah, local product based on local resources. And uh, they use the brand uh, Bukit Tempurung. Yeah, uh, so this is some example of the program. So within two years, uh, we have witnessed significant change in the condition of the people living there. Yeah, so uh, I think it's very uh, good uh, improvement. And from the most, one of the most backward village, within two years, they become the runner up, the finalists for uh, the most uh, preferable tourism destination for highland, highland category. Yeah, so you can imagine two years of transformation because of the intervention of Zakat programs that were conducted uh, jointly by the Basnas and also the United Nations Development Program. Another example is on economic empowerment. Yeah, uh, We focus to alleviate the poverty by providing uh, seed funding or production enhancement, capacity building, and market enlargement. And uh, this economic empowerment program is designed at least to serve uh, nine uh, goals of the SDGs. If you look at here, uh, SDGs number one, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten, and seventeen. Another example, yeah, is on the emergency services, which is dedicated to help the poor people, the vulnerable groups, and uh, to respond to any emergency situation, including the disaster response. Because as we know. Indonesia is on the ring of fire and we are very vulnerable to various natural disasters. So uh, this uh, forces us to always prepare ourselves to mitigate the disaster that may take place anytime. It can happen anytime. And uh, the realization of this program, at least in order to serve the achievement of at least five uh, goals of the uh, sustainable development. Another, uh, this is the last example of the Islamic social finance program uh, is on the uh, Wakaf. Yeah? And as I mentioned to you that uh, one of the model is on the uh, financial and business hybrid model in which we combine the cash Wakaf and the suku. So here in one of our project, we have a Wakaf based eye hospital and uh, we need to build a glaucoma and retina center at this eye hospital. So the fund needed, yeah, the fund use uh, was uh, taken from the issuance of Keshwaka Fling Sukuk that was for the first time issued last year on March uh, 2020. You can see the description of the, uh, the Sukuk, Keshwaka Fling Sukuk, yeah, the face value, the type of sovereign Sukuk, of Akkad yield, maturity period, if you can see from this uh, information. So, uh, Alhamdulillah, this eye hospital uh, has served yeah, a number uh, of uh, outpatient and eye surgery patients. And we have conducted more than 3,000 uh, free uh, eye surgery uh, uh, to, uh, to reach these uh, poor and needy people. So, this is just another example. Uh, and also, uh, Islamic social finance instruments uh, and also institutions are involved as well in the COVID-19 uh, program. Uh, we have launched the health emergency programs and also socioeconomic emergency program to ensure that 
uh, zakat and wakaf institutions are taking part uh, with uh, our government to mitigate the impact of the COVID-19 and also the economic recession. And uh, this is my final slide. I may have another maybe two, three minutes that these are the agenda, yeah, the future agenda of Islamic social finance development in our country in order to optimize the potential of zakat and wakaf. So the first agenda is uh, we need to increase the literacy of the people towards Islamic social finance. Yeah, because according to our study, that the level of uh, zakat literacy index is in the medium category, and the level of wakaf literacy index is in, in the low category. It means that we need more campaign and education programs that can clearly educate the people on the importance of zakat and wakaf. Although we are Muslim majority country, but uh, literacy needs to be increased. Number two, what we need to do is to improve the quality of the institution and human resource of this uh, Islamic social finance, Islamic social finance. And uh, the third agenda is on improvement on the digital technology innovation. Yeah, because we are living in the era that requires, uh, you know, uh, very deep involvement in the utilization of digital technology. Yeah, a number of uh, uh, innovation has been introduced. Uh, for example, in the zakat world, we have artificial intelligence that can be uh, utilized to educate, especially the millennial generation, because uh, our population, 52% of our population, comprise the uh, uh, Y generation and Z generation. So digital technology is very important. Uh, number four is enhancement of regulation support. The presence of national Islamic economy and finance that is directly led and chaired by our president, uh, Joko Widodo, uh, should be optimized because regulation support is uh, really needed. And the last one, is on the development of strategic research. Why this is important? Because we have benefited from various research. For example, why the collection of zakat can be increased four times greater just within four years. It is because of the research, strategic research that was conducted in 2016 and in which we have launched what we call as National Zakat Index as a measurement standard to analyze the performance of zakat. Sometimes when we are asked by the people, how many percent of the mustahik that can be released from the poverty? How many percent of this change? We always say the answer is, Wallahu alam. Yeah, we don't know the answer. But through the introduction of certain quantitative tools yeah, that can be used widely, so now we can answer that question. Yeah? So uh, why this happens? Because of the strategic research. That's why we produce a lot of uh, measurement standard. Yeah, on March this year, we launched the National Wakaf Index. On Zakat, we have, uh, in addition to National Zakat Index, we have uh, Sharia, Transparency, uh, Sharia Compliance Index for Zakat Institution, and also Transparency Index for Zakat Institution in order to convince the people that their money is in the right hand, is in the, you know, a trustable institution. So development of strategic research is very, very important as part of our effort to optimize the potential of zakat and wakaf. By that, I end my, my presentation. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for this very rich presentation, very informative. We really appreciate it. I was struck by the fact that only 5% of the potential zakah is collected. Yes, and correct. May, yeah. may, 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 maybe this is something that has to do with many people would like to give the zakah in, in, in maybe in secrecy, maybe the people are giving zakah, maybe you cannot count it, but you concluded your presentation by this strategic uh, research. Uh, it's always Allahu Alam, but uh, I thought maybe this is also a good tool to help. Maybe answer one of the questions later when we come back to you, as we see from, uh, uh, in, the, in the chat from uh, Mr. Uh, Khalil uh, Demir from the Zakat Foundation of America, Executive Director of the Zakat Foundation of America, he's questioning how, how, how did we come up with this uh, globally, of course, the 300 million 
300 billion dollars of zakat. Perhaps you can help with your strategic research later on when we get to the discussion to answer such a question, maybe with the help of Dr. Ahmed also. Uh, we'll get to it. But uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Arfan, for this very rich presentation. And now we move to the second presentation to Ms. Uh, Fatima Chinar. I hope I'm not mispronouncing your name, uh, Ms. Fatima. Uh, she's, the, the, she's the director of the international relations at uh, TKBB, the Association of Participation Banks of Turkey. MashaAllah, she's a writer, a lecturer, and an active a practitioner in many disciplines and many organizations. In the interest of time, uh, Ms. Fatima, welcome, and the floor is yours, please. Thank you very much for uh, giving us this opportunity, having us as Turkey to share our leading Islamic social finance activities at this platform. Uh, now I will open my presentation. Can you see the secret? Is it? Now it's clear. Go ahead, please. OK. OK. Uh, <clears throat> distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, warmest welcome from Turkey. Greetings from Turkey. And uh, it is a very honorable uh, time for us to, to share our Islamic social finance activities of Turkey at this platform. Uh, during the presentation, I would like to give a general picture about uh, social finance activities in Turkey. I, I'm sure that at the end of the presentation, uh, all of you have some uh, insightful ideas how to improve, institutionalize, and create some mechanism for, for having matured Islamic social finance infrastructure in Turkey. The content will be the role of Turkey for humanitarian aid, General Director of Foundations of Turkey will be just presented with you the details, which is the cultural heritage of Islamic social finance in Turkey and participation banks contribution to social finance activities. Then we will have Karzi Hassan institutions, which is new burn institutions in Turkey. And we have microfinance institution example. Then we will go over the leading institutions of Turkey for humanitarian aid. Then we will close the session with agenda for enhancing Islamic social finance activities in Turkey. Uh, when we look at the uh, statistics, uh, in, in 2020, Turkey accounted for 26 of global humanitarian aid amounted $8 billion totally, according to Global Humanitarian Assistance Report. And uh, when we look at this uh, aid in terms of country's national income, maybe this could be another indicator to perform, to, to measure the performance of the countries for humanitarian aid as a percentage of their national income. Turkey is taking 1% of its uh, GDP, uh, which makes it leading institutions among the uh, uh, other countries. And also very well known that Turkey hosts nearly 5 million refugees and the most in any country in the world, and the number of Syrians under the Temporary Protection Statute in Turkey around 4 million. I will give the, the, some general information about the cult, cultural heritage for Islamic social finance, where it is coming from for Turkey. It is coming from mainly from Ottoman Empire, uh, uh, which actively utilize uh, so foundations as a part of its system, as a public management system. The foundation expresses the institutionalized state of sense of solitary and co uh, cooperation. And uh, when we look at the, the, the role of the foundations and Turkish history and today, uh, they are social balances and ensuring the social integration, the continuation of social peace, the preven prevention of social conflicts, class conflicts, meeting the service demands of the public and ensuring the political and economic stability by means of performing significant flow of wealth from the rich to the poor society. It, when we look at the figures, uh, sorry. 
Ottoman significantly benefited from the material spiritual power of the fund, foundation institution because Ottoman Empire using a foundations as a system that creates prototype of a fair statesman who will ensure the peace of the old people's society with sharing the resources throughout the country. This is a foundation civilization because foundations, uh, they are the most effective institutional means under the control of state, both ensuring brotherhood, solidarity, and intimacy among social group. The Ottomans benefited extensively from the foundations that have been voluntarily established by individuals and, uh, and preventing the uh, forming of excessive differences due to the collecting of wealth in specific individuals' hands. And also I would like to emphasize that Evliya Çelebi wrote uh, about the Ottoman foundation works in 17th century as follows. I traveled uh, around, I traveled around uh, uh, 18 uh, sultanates uh, in many uh, kingdoms in 50 years, and I've never seen such a such, uh, country uh, full of charity work anywhere. Now the example uh, will come from uh, Turkey, which is a living institution established in 1920s in Turkey, general director of foundations of Turkey. Today, uh, uh, the foundations which is established in Selçuk and Ottoman period, their uh, as they, uh, they have no administration, they transferred to uh, administration of general uh, director of foundations of Turkey. And totally when we check the records, uh, we have 52,000 uh, foundations which transferred from the uh, Siltrik and Ottoman Empire to under the control of General Director of Foundation. Starting from its establishments in 1920s, uh, the, the number of uh, foundations opened in Turkey, 4,200. And when we look at the, their main function, in addition to administrative services for the, those foundations, they are providing scholars to students in line with the aims of its founders and provides monthly salaries and food, uh, food help, and also performs restoration of thousands of years of foundation works actively. And their contribution, the contribution of General Directorate of Foundations of Turkey to the Turkish societies uh, reached to 2.5 billion Turkish lira. What are the mechanisms, the investments of this institution to conduct it and survive it is, is it, it's itself as an institution? One of them is flat for land base. It is described as, as a construction work on immovable properties of foundations, which uh, provides a uh, tender uh, and in return, uh, uh, the, it is getting possession. Since 2003, the, in this method, flat for land-based construction, uh, the, 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 uh, the uh, let's say, the value created through this system, uh, approximately uh, 3,285 houses, uh, more than uh, 300 shops and many offices under this method. Another one is conditional leasing on re restoration model. This is also actively used uh, model like build, operate and transfer model. It is the period operating time is between 20 years to 49 years. And this method is still actively used in Turkey. There are many projects conducted under those structures uh, due to considering the time limitation. I, I couldn't put uh, additional pictures and slides uh, of those uh, uh, models, but those models actively producing, uh, less, as I mentioned, houses, shops, offices, and they are invest uh, through their investments and returns, uh, like mentioned, scholarships and also food, food supports and restoration support provided to the community. And other one is the conditional leasing on reconstruction model. This is this aims to preserve and reconstruct the cultural uh, properties. This method also actively used in the in the uh, foundation. Uh, and I want to come to the after this institution. I want to come to the example of selective activities of participation banks. In Turkey, there are six participation banks. We call a uh, is uh, uh, participation in terms of Islamic banks in Turkey. Now there, there are six participation bank operating in, in Turkey. One of them is Vakıf Katılım, which established in 2015. It is one of the youngest participation public uh, institution and their owner is also general director of foundation. Uh, they, they are also carrying foundation culture in Turkey actively in addition to their commercial activities, they are also creating 
uh, foundation culture activities in the banking industry. This is also a real role model activity. Just a very kind reflection from their activities. For example, they uh, initiated a project of uh, having uh, bird houses. Uh, they initiated a project to design an art of bird houses to, to also their very kind consideration, not just for human beings and also even for uh, animals and also the, uh, the, society, the natural environment. Uh, uh, and after this, uh, uh, um, this uh, design and art uh, campaign, they selected the best best design and, and, and the honor honored them with some payments. Uh, and also the Vakıf Katılım donated 5 million Turkish lira to National Solidarity Company, uh, which severely affected by COVID-19 pandemic. So this, this also shows the role of the banks within the country have to contribute to Islamic social finance activities. Another one is Alberica Turk Participation Bank. A very important uh, responsibility from Alberica. They uh, uh, established Bereket Foundation scholarship support uh, starting from 1986. They provided scholarship to more than uh, 16,000 uh, students. And their source of the funds is coming from the shareholders of the bank, their zakat payments. This is a very kind of also model uh, to, to, to add value to the from the banking perspective to the society. Uh, Alberica Turk, it is the only and first bank who is uh, active in carbon disclosure project, clearly uh, supporting climate change activities and SDGs. They are again the only bank who provide sustainability report within Turkey. I should emphasize that SDGs and sustainability activities not matured uh, in Turkey, very newborn stage. So we need uh, definitely after those dialogue discussions, mechanism structures to implement in Turkey to, to create awareness about SDGs and their infrastructure needs. And also Elbrekotur provided distance education tablet support this is another example due to this pandemic period many students have online distance learning but many of them not having uh, necessary uh, uh, support uh, uh, technical supports uh, they actively supported them they also uh, uh, established a pc laboratory in gaza islamic university for visually impaired uh, students and they also donated significant amount to national solidarity campaign for the COVID-19 pandemic uh, uh, campaign. Uh, and also, they, this is the only institution who emphasized uh, that their activities in line with SDG A, distant work and economic growth, and SDG uh, 12, responsible consumption and production. Of course, our intention to, to uh, encourage uh, banks and other institutions to also express their uh, their how their activities in line with SDGs. The other participation bank, Quinter participation banks, they are actively putting value for, for especially a restoration of historical monuments uh, and also historical values. They are uh, put, uh, rest restoring and also having uh, some uh, documentaries and some works to, to to also re relay this uh, culture to the young generation. They also donated significant amount, like 20 million Turkish lira to the National Solidarity Campaign. And also education is very important activity to, to, to support social finance within the country. Uh, Kuwait Turk and Alberica Turk established uh, International Islamic uh, Finance Research and Application Center under uh, uh, Istanbul Sabah Zayim University. They also funded the, this uh, institution with their activities. Uh, another issue, health sector, this is also very important, needs support, not just from government side, but also from private uh, uh, private sector. This institution also uh, to, to, to increase the awareness about the cancer, uh, uh, supporting continuously the, the Hope Foundation uh, to, to, to manage to cancer, uh, starting from 2000. 13. And another one is digitalization, very important also, which will be a leverage for also Islamic social finance activities, uh, Islamic fintech and Islamic digitalization activities. This bank also, as uh, uh, they have a Lonja Entrepreneurship Center, they are providing cash grant support up to 
40,000 Turk kişilere to startups and they, uh, they are offering such services, trainings, mentoring, incubation center, R&D, and uh, covers some of their uh, costs uh, for their participation in international affairs and events. So what is very important, the communication of institutions, how they communicate their business, their activities, because not just human beings, institutions are also live organizations. Their claims very important and they ha it has significant influence over the society. Institutions communicating like our greatest responsibility is human. So they supported humanitarian aid activities, just an example for Arakan Muslims. They initiated uh, with 1 million Turkish dura donation. Then they encouraged their customers and their personal and the amount uh, seven times more uh, uh, after their initiation. And they uh, delivered this to a uh, significant institution, Kızılay. Uh, in, in Turkey. Ms. Fatima, these, these are very rich examples. Uh, and the, I have looked at your presentation. It uh, might take us the rest of the time. So please be cognizant of the time. Okay. So maybe if you can do five more slides or five more minutes, that will be great. Because I, I, know, I know we will have some questions for you. But this, these are very great examples. Thank you very much. Please proceed. Okay, sure, sure, uh, Mr. Rami. As I mentioned, we need a mechanism to match those activities with SDGs. Definitely, this is the need of Turkey. I want to give the whole picture as a general picture. What are the activities? Uh, one of them is Karza has done very new burn activity, and there are uh, very strong uh, projects uh, under also uh, participation bank association to have uh, Karza has done for retail customers, commercial customers, and also social finance activities. One of them is established by a business associate, businessman association. Uh, this uh, uh, this fund, uh, uh, the principle of this fund is to helping the spouse and children of deceased member. Uh, and also other one is the uh, Karza Hazen Foundation. This is uh, supporting the couples who are uh, facing financial problems. Uh, this is also a very, very good example how to how to keep young people from interest during the year such an important uh, uh, responsibility. Other one is uh, microfinance. We have Turkish Foundation for Waste Reduction. This institution established in 1998. Uh, they are uh, working as the as the uh, uh, active uh, application of uh, Turkey uh, green and microfinance program since 2003 with the aim of helping pure women engage in income generating activities. What is very good, uh, starting from their act, uh, activities, this institution uh, generated, provided uh, approximately 1 billion uh, uh, Turkish loans uh, to 170,000 women. And the loan conversion rate was 100%. This is very, very good, very encouraging uh, example. There are some delays, but this is due to the illnesses and also business disruption. And Turkey, uh, Turkey Dianet Foundation, of course, very important uh, stakeholder within the ecosystem, established in 1975. Uh, uh, they, they conduct local and international activities. I may highlight the Zakat project because Zakat, project, Zakat is a, a term, is an institution which should uh, should be uh, institutionalized, which should have government support, which should be maybe compulsory within the country. The potential of Turkey for zakat uh, accumulation is yearly basis, uh, 55 billion uh, dollar, but unfortunately it is not calculated, it is not measured, it is not collected through uh, institutional uh, systems. This is a huge potential uh, for Turkey. If, uh, the Anit Foundation initiated a project uh, to, to deliver, uh, to they, they are calculating zakat through their system, and they are also guiding people in Turkey and out of the Turkey for their zakat responsibilities. And also they, they want to put the awareness that it is not a one, one month period of responsibility. They should consider their zakat payments uh, throughout the year. This is another issue because everybody consider uh, and keep in mind zakat in Ramadan period, but they should care about their zakat payments during the whole year. And also, uh, I want to uh, keep uh, cast some of them. Uh, Tur Turkish Red Crisp, and this Kızılay in Turkish, they, they, that is, their activity is also very important because they are also putting value for aid assistance and social cohesion programs 
uh, especially for people living under temporary projections, they, for Syrian uh, refugees, uh, their support is very important. Uh, they, they, uh, they are having um, social solitary, such as shelter, uh, protection, healthcare, blood, disaster operations. It's a wide range of activities they are pro providing. What is very good for their uh, to have their business continuity. Uh, they, for example, they are producing their uh, tents by themselves. Uh, and also due to pandemic period, they started to produce their uh, masks by themselves. They initiate uh, factories, they establish factories for mask uh, uh, for, uh, production. Uh, this is also very good. And this, uh, they are planning to, to uh, make an uh, amount of uh, 225 million Turkish the amount of aid materials to 8 million people. So those are their uh, effects significant in considering their amount and coverage. And finally, I want to come to the agenda of enhancing Islamic financial, uh, finance activities in Turkey. This is the agenda of the Turkey. Uh, in under association project of Karza Hassan for retail and commercial customers. Uh, it, it is about to finalize. And also Karza Hassan for social financing. It is uh, at the ad agenda. It will be worked. I believe that uh, the, the discussions after this dialogue sessions will contribute value to the activities in Turkey. And also uh, TKBB also association also signed a MOU with a UNDP Turkey office uh, to, to, to how to benefit Islamic finance activities uh, to support SDGs. And finally, very important, uh, under President's office, participation finance department established, and this department is studying a strategy for Turkish Islamic finance ecosystem. And the very important highlight consideration will be Makasit uh, el Sharia value proposal, risk sharing, and human centering finance. They will try to intensify and link the, those uh, uh, activities with social, social responsible finance, impact investment, and sustainable finance. And uh, I want to close my presentation that 2020 pandemic is a wake up call for all humanity. To have sustainable goals is not a preference. It is a mandatory for all of us as a stakeholder, all of us, we have responsibility and wish to uh, have the uh, richness of those dialogue. And we are quite hungry of getting feedbacks and uh, results of this dialogue and implement in our country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Fatima. This is really very rich. So many examples, so many numbers. And uh, just I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not part of the steering committee, but I hope Dr. Ahmed, uh, the steering committee that's composing IDB and the United Nations is really taking good note of these things because this could be a very good database of all examples that could be a very nice input for the roadmap as you are developing this in the, in the future. These are very concrete examples with numbers, with evidence uh, on how we can really employ the Islamic finance for uh, all kinds of uh, aspects of the uh, SDGs. But uh, uh, Ms. Fatima, I really thank you very much for this elaborative uh, presentation. And I'm sure we'll get some questions from the audience on, 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 on these uh, activities. Very, very uh, rich line of activities in here. And now I think we uh, better try to answer some of the questions or allow for some of the uh, interventions will uh, will come to you. I see Dr. Ahmed uh, uh, alluding to 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 uh, Mr. Tijani. Is he with us here, Mr. Tijani? Mr. Tijani, uh, are you with us to have a quick intervention, please? Uh, I don't see him. I think maybe if he comes back, we will we will uh, be happy to give him the floor for a quick. Uh, intervention also, but uh, for the questions that we have, feel free to raise hands. Uh, somebody might help me see the hands. Otherwise, we will go to the chat and see the the the, uh, the questions asked. And uh, I will start by the first question, as I mentioned, uh, Dr. Arfan, or maybe Dr. Ahmed, if they wanted to address the question of the three hundred billion dollars that people prefer to especially in light of the uh, evidence-based uh, small percentage of collected zakah versus potential. Would you like to address this, Dr. Arfan, first? Yes. Uh, first of all, the number mentioned in my presentation actually in rupiah, not in uh, US dollar. Yeah. 
So 327 trillion rupiah is basically equal to 2.11%, 2.11% of our GDP. That is the uh, calculated potential of zakat, and uh, the study has been has been made regarding this uh, matter. And the biggest proportion is on the zakat of a corporation. So corporate zakat uh, occupy the first uh, or the biggest potential, followed by the zakat on uh, income, yeah, of the people. So uh, this number is two point eleven percent, and if we convert to US dollar. Yeah, with uh, two days trade, yeah, in Indonesia, I just calculated, uh, it's around to 22 billion. Yeah, it's not 300. Yeah, only 22 billion uh, US dollar. But the collected number last year, but it is still unaudited. Yeah, because the audit process is still uh, going on. Uh, the unaudited number is uh, around. Uh, 12 trillion rupiah, 12.5 or 2.7. So if we convert to US dollar, it's, on, it's only 829 million, not billion, yeah, million uh, US dollars. So uh, this is uh, about the number. But if we want to calculate the potential zakat, uh, potential of zakat globally, of course, uh, uh, we don't have the data yet, but if we consider the old research conducted by Monzer Kaf, yeah, uh, he was uh, calculating the potential of zakat in the Muslim countries uh, that reach between 1% until 3.6%, uh, yeah, so of the total GDP, yeah, and, and he, you know, uh, highlights uh, all of this potential. And if we use that as the reference, calculating uh, the potential, the percentage with the existing GDP, yeah, we can have around 300, 400 billion US dollar, but in the entire Muslim world, not a single Indonesia. Yeah, I, so. see, I, I think this is very good clarification. And Indonesia yes. being one of the biggest countries, of course, we're talking about the potential of 22 billion in only one country. And maybe Dr. Ahmed would like to come in here and comment quickly on, on, on the number 300. Of course, Dr. Munzer Al-Tahaf is a scholar well known in, in, in these things, and he was at one point in IDB. Uh, but is it always just an estimate of the GDP, or is there is something more to it, uh, Dr. Ahmed? Well, uh, I'm sorry, I will speak also in Arabic, so I will leave the, the, the floor and I encourage the Arabic speaker to also speak and ask questions. Um, I think, as you said, Dr. Arufan, we are talking about Indonesia. هي الفكرة أن إيجاد آلية دولية بحيث أن إحنا ما نتكلم عن الدول الإسلامية فقط وإنما نتطلع كذلك إلى المسلمين الذين يدفعون زكواتهم سواء كان في الدول الأوروبية أو في في أمريكا أو في أستراليا فالفكرة مش فقط هي الذي يقوم عليه هذا الحوار هو أن إحنا نستهدف فقط الدول الإسلامية وإنما الفكرة أبعد من ذلك وأكبر حتى لأن القابل والاحتياجات اللي موجودة الآن جدا يعني كبيرة ونحتاج إلى تمويل خاصة في منظمات الأمم المتحدة يعني التقارير تشير إلى أن هناك احتياج كبير فوجود آلية يعني التمويل الاجتماعي الإسلامي راح يسد كثير من الثغرات وخاصة أن يعني ال يعني إذا صح التعبير أكثر الكوارث الطبيعية أو الكوارث التي من الإنسان سواء كانت من الحروب وخلافة تأتي من في دول تقريبا 60% منها كلها في دول إسلامية فوجود آلية مثل هذه الآلية راح تساعد كثير على سد احتياجات الناس الذين هم في أمس الحاجة لها شكرا وخاصة في ضوء الانديميك أدفرس يعني سيتويشن I think the even uh... Uh, Ms. Fatima referred to the SDGs, and I'm glad you mentioned that in your last uh, uh, slide. Uh, even the gains that were uh, obtained uh, in the last few years, now we have to deal with the reversal of these uh, gains on the SDGs, and it's all at the human level. And basically, there's no question, Dr. Ahmed, on the need, but uh, my, my hallucination or my, my, my thinking, I think, goes with the uh, 
Brother Khalil from the Zakat uh, Foundation of America, because it seems like we are always uh, estimating at the end of the day, the issue of Zakat, no matter how we estimate it, there is always a potential more than this. And we know that many people might go through informal channels basically to try this. But the more we do strategic research, as Dr. Arfan has mentioned, the more we can get to uh, a better estimate. At the end of the day, it's an estimate. And fundamentally in Islam, the giving of Zakat cannot be always enforced as a tax. It has to do with the belief of the person. And I think this has to do also with uh, the, 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 the solidarity of a bringing of cultures in, in many of these countries. And as you mentioned with the Muslim communities in non-Islamic uh, countries. Can I go to the second question? And it's going to Dr. Arfan also. Could you please advise on the proportion of funds allocated to consumptive based program versus productive-based programs under the Zakat program. Please, very quickly, so we can move to the other yeah. question. Yeah, so uh, the number, the proportion, uh, alhamdulillah, uh, can be increased from time to time. Uh, 2019, it was around uh, 14%, but uh, last year, uh, it, it has exceeded the 20% for the productive-based program. So. Uh, but still the domination or the biggest uh, proportion is on consumptive base because uh, zakat mostly is used to you know to help uh, the poor and the needy to uh, directly fulfill their very basic needs uh, and also as a response to uh, various uh, disasters that we have yeah yeah, but uh, I think the underpinning of this question, uh, don't give me a fish, give me something to fish with. Uh, and maybe this is uh, an element to be included in this international dialogue on how we can direct uh, the, 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 the uh, uh, funds of Zakat into something uh, more productive to enable people to really be empowered and to get out of the, the need of uh, simple uh, consumptive. And I think maybe this is a point for debate. I, I see uh, uh, Ms. Fatima would like to come in. Would you like to uh, address this very quickly? Yeah, I just want to express that the CESRIC expressed that uh, last year, the total potential of zakat globally in Muslim countries, $10 trillion. It is an official announcement. They, they expressed $10 trillion. It is announced by uh, CESRIC. I may also find the exact explanation and share with you. And also, the, the, in, uh, in one question, it is mentioned that is those collected zakat utilized for in Turkey or in, in Indonesia or outside of the Turkey in terms of distribution side. For example, in Turkey, uh, last year, uh, approximately uh, 80 million Turkish are collected during Ramadan from uh, Fitra Zakat and donations. And 1.2 million uh, don uh, people in Turkey has um, benefited from this and the rest from uh, out of the Turkey and uh, more than 70 countries. So it is in Turkey, beneficial side, distribution side in Turkey and also the other countries who are in need of that. Thanks. Thank you. This is good for the other question. Maybe Dr. Arfan, uh, you want to address the same uh, issue here on where to utilize geographically the uh, collected uh, proceeds? Yeah, uh, mostly the distribution is within the country, uh, but uh, we also have uh, done the uh, abroad, yeah, I mean, for the distribution of zakat, but, but for a specific geographical location particularly in the Palestinian territory and also uh, with the neighboring countries, and also uh, uh, with the uh, Rohingya Muslim, et cetera, because uh, the number of uh, poverty is in, is our, in our country is also still large, yes. So, so that's why most of the collected fund is utilized domestically, but uh, at the same time, we also have a, a solidarity with the uh, global you know, uh, disaster, yeah, if you, you can say like that. And uh, we have also allocated uh, some portion of the fund to help uh, our brothers and sisters outside uh, Indonesia, but uh, it is only for uh, specific uh, regions, yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much. Maybe I would like to come back to Dr. Ahmed, maybe uh, being the special envoy of the Secretary General. So basically you are on top of the globe not only in the Muslim countries. I'm, I'm putting you under pressure here, Dr. Ahmad, but uh, generally speaking, generally speaking, uh, 
there was an issue with uh, the utilization of zakah within the locality of the where it was collected. And I remember uh, that there was a lot of debate, uh, even Sharia wise, could you really take it from the geography that you collected to use it somewhere else? But I understand that there was some more development in fatwa from official fatwa. Uh, could you uh, highlight this and whether we are more at ease now? Is it uh, still a sovereign issue where collected money in country X cannot be taken to country Y? How did you deal with this from a, a, a Sharia wise? If you could say a few words on that. Please. <laughs> طبعا احنا ما راح يعني نتطرق لكل دولة من الدول كيفية يعني جمع الذكاء وصرفها ولكن احنا بصدد حقيقة كأمم متحدة كيف, كيف الإمكانية من إيجاد آلية تجمع ما بين يعني جمع الذكاء لذلك احنا خلينا هذا الحوار مفتوح لكافة الدول والمتداخلين حتى نجد وين نجد مكان نقدر نجمعها ونوجد آلية تسمح للجميع أنه هو يساهم في هذه الآلية وفي نفس الوقت تسمح كذلك للمشاركة بأن الجميع يقولون والله من وين ممكن إحنا نبدأ لذلك إحنا الآن يعني حينما بدأنا هذا الحوار في الندوة الأولى حقيقة وجدت أن هناك كثير من التحديات لا شك وهناك كثير من الصعوبات يعني إحنا قاعدين نواجه ليس فقط مسألة شرعية وإن كذلك مسألة ثقافية لأن أنت لما تكلم الثقافة العربية تختلف عن الثقافة الأسيوية تختلف عن الثقافة الأوروبية عرف كيف فهناك اختلاف ثقافات لذلك جاء هذا الحوار لجمع هذه الثقافات المختلفة والاتفاق على آلية تجمع أو تقرب من وجهات النظر لكافة هذه الثقافات وكذلك في نفس الوقت تتوافق مع الشريعة الغراء لذلك الذي يقوم به بنك التنمية البنك الإسلامي للتنمية ووجوده كذلك في هذه المبادرة يعطي كذلك الفرصة بأن إحنا فعلا تكون هناك تأصيل لهذه الآلية ويكون فيه تأكيد بأن هذه الأموال أو هذه الآلية تتوافق مع الشريعة تتوافق كذلك مع من ناحية أخرى مع مع الثقافات. كل ما جينا صراحة لندوة من الندوات أجد أن هناك كثير من التحديات تخف علينا صح في ضغوط كثيرة في تحديات في صعوبات لكن كل مرة أنا أسمع من المتحدثين والبرزنتيشن أو العروض المقدمة من المتداخلين حقا تخفف علينا هذا اللود لأن في النهاية إحنا سوف نجمع يعني كل هذه المداخلات حتى نصل إلى يعني طريقة أو خارطة طريق مبدئية تتوافق وهذه المبادئ وهذه الثقافة وكذلك تكون متوافقة مع الشريعة شكرا وكان بودي أن أخفف عليك أكثر بس اسمح لي أن أزيد العبء عليك شوية بالتحدي تبع الجوفرنس of the deployment of the proceeds so after the collection, and maybe the dialogue will bring into the roadmap some uh, suggestions on collection mechanisms and uh, somehow perhaps you need to the challenges that you just mentioned, the challenge of really ensuring good governance in utilizing these uh, proceeds. Because as you know, and forgive me, this is a dialogue and we, we, we need to speak frankly, Many, many people don't give zakat to the official channels sometimes because they are not sure that these governments are really utilizing them in the right way uh, for the eight uh, places to put the zakat. Some of the, يعني, unfortunately, there is some corruption somewhere. There is some other things. So I hope you add to the challenges. I was hoping to alleviate the, the, the burden on your shoulder here, but I think this is a challenge that we cannot shy away from, Dr. Ahmed, on how also we can ensure the governance in utilizing the, 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 the proceeds. Do you like to comment on this very quickly, or could I go to the next <laughs> <تصفيق> اعتقد دكتور ان انت اجبت على على الاجابه هي حقيقه هذه الاليه سوف تكون كذلك يعني احد الخيارات المتاحه لمن يريد ان يدفع الزكاه 
وكذلك وجود هذا الحوار حقيقة هو يعطي الفرصة للجميع أن يتداخل ويعطي آراء حتى في النهاية إحنا لا نترك أحد خلفنا إلا وأخذنا رأيه ولذلك إحنا مثل ما تشوف يعني إذا كنت متابع الندوة الأولى والثانية والثالثة يعني إحنا حبينا أن إحنا ننوع ويكون في هناك تنويع من آسيا من أوروبا من الخليج كذلك يعني يشاركوننا آلياتهم اللي هم قاعدين يستخدمونها كلوكل بعد ذلك في الجزء الثاني لذلك جات فكرة صراحة الحوار هذا أن أول شيء خلنا نتفهم ما هي ما هو التمويل الاجتماعي الاسلامي؟ بعد ذلك هل هناك قصص نجاح؟ هل هناك يعني مؤسسات او منظمات قامت بتنفيذ مثل هذه الاليه؟ وهل عندهم اليات؟ فاحنا الان اخذنا الاليات المحليه اذا صح التعبير يعني سواء كان من اندونيسيا، كان سواء كان من تركيا، سواء كان كذلك من من ماليزيا يعني اخذنا الان هذه التجارب، الان الخطوه الثانيه والجزء الثاني من من هذه الندوات ان احنا نسمع من منظمات الامم المتحده وشراكتهم او كذلك نسمع طبعا من البنك الاسلامي للتنميه منظمات الامم المسلمه ومشاركتهم في تنفيذ مثل هذه الاليات ووين قاعدين ينفذونها وكيفيه تنفيذها، هذا كله بيجي في الجزء الاول، لازلنا احنا طبعا في الجزء الاول لازم قصدي بيجي في الجزء الثاني لان لازمنا احنا في الجزء الاول لنتفهم وناخذ اكثر قدر ممكن من المعلومات في كيفيه تنفيذ هذه الزكاه وهذه الاليات واقصد بالاليات اليات التمويل الاسلامي الاجتماع التمويل الاجتماعي الاسلامي داخل الدول وبعد ذلك ننطلق الى منظمات الامم المتحده وبعد ذلك الشراكات ومن ثم سيكون عندنا خارطه طريق توضح لنا وين ممكن افضل السبل لانشاء اليه. اوكي شكرا جزيلا. Uh, I have a long question from brother uh, Sajjad. Could you could you take the floor and speak up maybe very quickly that will save me the time of reading your quick uh, long question. Could you brother Sajid? Sajid Hussein, Sajid Hussein, are you with us? Okay, maybe I can come back to you. There's another question about uh, big corporations, and I don't know who would like to take this, uh, to address this question, but very important question. Uh, in 2020, American people donated 450 billion to charity and social causes. Only 80 billion comes from large companies. Uh, the rest from people. I am just sharing this as information, but this brings the question, is the zakah always focusing on the individuals, while we have uh, mega corporation and international corporations who are not really obliged, basically, to pay any zakah, and only in some of the Muslim countries where they do have a, a, an item for zakah on corporations like this. Any one of the speakers would like to address this issue? Yes. Go yeah. ahead, Dr. Arfan. Yeah, I think... Uh both uh, the individual payers as well as the corporation, uh, we need to optimize the potential of that taken from these two uh, components because uh, in our case in Indonesia, uh, the definition of muzaki includes individual as well as the corporation. So corporation uh, is made as part of the muzaki definition. But uh, in our case, uh, we are still on the voluntary basis. Although we have our own zakat it is still voluntary. So I think uh, in this regard, uh, we need to increase the literacy. Yeah, Because as you correctly mentioned, Dr. Rami, that uh, in our case, yeah, if we look at the data, that uh, the number of zakat paid directly to the recipients without going to the institution of AMIL, the legal institution of AMIL, is uh, around five times bigger. Yeah, Five times bigger than the uh, uh, collected fund from the official channel. So uh, this is according to our estimate. That's why what we need to do is we have to convince people that we are trustable institution. And for us, trust is not something that is given. Trust is something that we have to fight for. Yeah. And what we need to do, yeah, there are a lot of things. We have Zakat core principles yeah, in which uh, there are a lot of things, a lot of aspects that are regulated through these uh, core principles. For example, uh, we need to increase our uh, AMIL governance, yeah, and also uh, the trust, yeah, and also the transparency, financial transparency and accountability, etc. Even now, 
uh, in this uh, pandemic, when the utilization of digital technology becomes more important, what we do in uh, our National Board of Zakat, we are now, alhamdulillah, just end of last year, we are, uh, you know, certified in terms of uh, data security. So ISO 27001. Yeah, so certification of data security. Why we, we did that? Just to make sure the people that uh, when you send your money, when you donate your fund to us yeah, through official channel, it will be in a good and trustable uh, and I, I think another level would be the Muzaki would like to go to SDG one, or would like it to be to SDG, Correct. or would like it because we are in the in the in the in the uh, the topic Correct. today is how to relate this to the SDGs. So part of the governance also is if I want my money to go to really uh, SDG one, I, I would like to have the assurance that I'm really serving SDG one. Um, that's what but that's welfare index. Yeah? yeah, we have our own business welfare index right. to measure the impact of zakat distribution mm -hmm. on the condition of the people from the economic perspective, uh, from the education and health, and also their self dependency because we want to transform them into the muzaki. Yeah. Okay, because some people might see the value in SDG 17, for example, and yes. they don't mind having their money go there. And some people, honestly, they don't, they don't, for whatever reason. And I think, uh, thank you, Dr. Arfan. Uh, I think this answered your question, uh, Brother uh, Basil, uh, Basit, Basit Khan. I think you got the answer, inshallah. Let me come back to Brother Sajid very quickly. If you can uh, voice out, uh, I, I just unmuted you. So if you can very quickly just voice your question, please. Yeah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, yeah, I am uh, Sajid from uh, India. And uh, as uh, most of the, uh, you know, the discussions have been happening with respect to how do we ensure that we bring more trust, you know, from, for the Muzakis to come more and more people to contribute for certain specific causes, including, as you rightly mentioned about the specific of SDGs. We, I mean, uh, as part of, you know, the startup that which we have started, uh, you know, where we are developing Islamic fintech solutions and specifically, inshallah, our first product is going to be on uh, Zakat. And this is going to be since it is on blockchain. The advantage of this is that the whole idea of the uh, starting from the collection till the final uh, you know, disbursement that happens can be easily recorded and transparently been seen everywhere. And the Mozakis also have the uh, option to uh, contribute to a specific cause through specific organizations. If they want, they can choose to ISDB or UNHCR and so on and so on and so forth. So I believe that, you know, having a technology like this can really help, you know, in the disbursement of a part of it a lot of. Excellent. Thank you very much. This brings the dimension, Dr. Ahmed, into the dialogue of utilizing uh, fintech and the blockchain and making sure that people are safe in their, whether uh, giving or uh, receiving the uh, the proceeds of uh, zakah and other Islamic. I, and so far, we're just talking about zakah and sadaqa. Nobody raised the, yani, the issues, the questions of other productive means of Islamic finance, where we help people in the microfinance, as we saw some of the examples in the two speakers. But uh, the questions are all uh, going. Let, let me go to Yusuf Aswadi. Go ahead, please. Uh, very quickly, please. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rami and everyone. Um, my name is Yusuf Aswadi, and I'm part of the ISDB team managing the Oqaf Properties Investment Fund. Um, my question is actually doctor, uh, directed to Dr. or Ms. Fatma Chinar. And specifically, I'd like to tie in your expertise and background in the Catalan and Participation Bank area with, uh, with kind of the Waqf uh, aspect specifically. I know that historically, um, I believe, uh, the cash work really played a large role in terms of providing um, finance, access to finance to the less advantaged uh, people. Uh, why aren't we seeing more nonprofit solutions, that, let's say like a Waqf Bank today? You mentioned Waqf Bank, but I believe that Waqf Bank is a commercial bank, which in fact distributes its dividend to perhaps the Waqf directorate. So is this something that has come on the table in front of you? And uh, I'd be interested to hearing your, your response, especially since uh, you know, SDG number one, the first and foremost is related to poverty uh, and access to finance can really go a long way towards that. Thank you. Good question. Uh, Ms. Fatima, would you like to address it very quickly? Sure, that's a very good question. This is uh, at our very fresh agenda, this project. Initially discussed as, a, as an idea uh, you know, with our participation bank association of Turkey, which we have strong members, they, are, they have capability. Uh, to, to support such a project. 
it is uh, on the agenda. I mean, in the coming days, uh, I wish we will share the details, uh, structures, but this work related, uh, let's say, uh, structures, mechanisms uh, will be on, uh, on ecosystem soon in the coming days. Okay, thank you. Uh, now let me give the floor to Ahmed Farouk Dukin, please very quickly. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rami. Thank you to uh, uh, all the speakers uh, for the excellent points that they've raised. I just had a very quick question about uh, surplus zakat. Uh, we know, you know, there's been, uh, the numbers have been already being discussed and we know that there's lots of surplus uh, zakat available. Sometimes it's not all uh, utilized nationally or locally. So what, I mean, what are some <coughs> things that could be done by uh, development institutions uh, we know that there are already some, uh, for instance, uh, uh, UNICEF and other types of UN agencies also are trying to make use of uh, zakat uh, to address some of the um, resilience issues and fragility issues. But what could be done on a uh, on a larger scale to use these surplus zakat for uh, poverty alleviation and possibly for other areas uh, of SDGs? Thank You're you. addressing the question to who? Uh, to the speakers, to, if, okay. if any. Okay. Yeah. Would you would you like to take it, Dr. Arfan or uh, Sister uh, Fatima? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, so I think uh, we have to be very careful when we use the term surplus zakat because uh, in our understanding and also practices that uh, the zakat uh, must be distributed as soon as possible. So the time uh, delay between the collection and distributions should be minimized. So, uh, so the term, I think, uh, yes, uh, at the end of the financial year, yeah, we may have 10 uh, reserve, but it, uh, uh, in our case, it is maximum 10%. It should not exceed that uh, number. And this reserve will be used on the first month of the next year. So uh, this is for the term. But what I'm trying to uh, understand from the question is how we uh, synergize, yeah? Uh, the zakat fund that we have, uh, maybe in some countries, uh, they they are difficult in finding the, the uh, poor people, or they have a very high standard of poverty compared to uh, the other countries. So, in this regard, uh, I think uh, we need to uh, do this kind of dialogue, yeah, to identify the actual needs uh, of uh, these uh, challenges. So. What we should do in order to contribute in, uh, you know, in uh, reducing, uh, let's say, uh, the number of poverty. So synergy is very important, and we can discuss this, and then uh, we can have a certain understanding, and then we implement a pilot project in this regard, just like what uh, we did with the UNDP uh, when we have a common ground, common understanding on the issue of SDGs. And then uh, we both agree to collaborate. So this kind of uh, uh, collaborative collaboration can also be implemented uh, in other uh, parts of the world. Uh, that's my uh, response. Thank you. Okay. okay. Yeah. The organizers are pushing me to close, but let me give one minute to Sister Fatima and one minute again to Brother Arfan if they wanted to say one final thoughts. But but let me. We'll not have the time to get the other question, but there is one thought-provoking comment from uh, Brother Halil. He said uh, this is very difficult to say, however easy to understand. If we always highlight zakat, we will make serious mistake. Think of a person who has $1 million, you are asking for $25,000. What do you think? A person has a $1 million can only give $25,000. Can this $25,000 solve our problem? I thought by way of thought provoking, I think we need to keep this in mind, but I will not have time to give him the floor. So one minute for uh, Ms. Fatima, if you would like to have any concluding remarks and I will come back to Dr. Arfan. Sure. Uh, yeah. I, I would like to emphasize the scope of Islamic social finance, how we communicate, how we address the issue, the, the subject is very important, this responsibility on us. So when we, uh, we, may, uh, we may clarify the scope of Islamic social finance products throughout the 
countries, Muslim countries, what are the oil products utilized at the related countries and the mechanisms, what are the mechanisms and also ecosystem members, who are the key contacts to get information about those products through which mechanism. This is very important because we see that it is in piece and piece we collect some information, but to have concrete uh, idea, concrete, let's say, um, information about uh, each application, we, we need to have uh, a, a, a one piece of information, one piece of system source to, to understand what how we are going, what we are doing. This is a unit. Unity is very important at the site as Zekat as a like a, a window a window, uh, let's say, product of this uh, system, Islamic social finance. I, in my presentation, that's why I try to emphasize the other institution mechanism, how we can contribute to the ecosystem. Maybe this is a lesson for us to also communicate over, put emphasis also, or, or put special uh, sessions for microfinance, for other products to, 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 to highlight the, the coverage uh, of uh, Islamic social finance. SDG integration also very important, especially for Turkey. I feel that after the uh, presentation from my colleague Irfan, very in line with SDGs, but in Turkey it is limited. We, I, we, I'm taking also minus. Hope to also take your support to, to, to also uh, to, to uh, transfer uh, Turkish uh, Islamic social finance activities to SDG uh, communication, SDG language, let's say. Thank you very much for Thank giving you. us this opportunity. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for being with us, Dr. Arfan. If you can limit it to one minute because the organizer is killing me. Go ahead, please. Thank you. So uh, I think uh, this kind of platform is very important. I would like to emphasize on the importance of uh, global cooperation yeah, based on mutual uh, synergy. And I think uh, the achievement of SDGs is not uh, the responsibility for the government only or the UN agencies only, but it is our uh, entire uh, mankind responsibility. So we need to contribute. And one way to contribute is through the optimization of Islamic social finance, because the Islamic social finance has a very deep impact, not only increasing the quality of uh, spiritual spirituality of the people but also it has a very huge impact on social aspect as well as on economic aspect which i believe it can help uh, us to achieve the sdgs uh, although i realize that uh, challenges are there and we need to do uh, a lot of things but uh, through the commitment of synergy and collaboration i think nothing is impossible Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you very much, both of you and speakers, for really being with us. I would like to also thank all the audience for sharing their thoughts and uh, uh, experiences and the questions, enriching the dialogue. And really, it's just a dialogue trying to get more ideas as we move towards uh, hopefully finalizing some sort of a roadmap to one point. Uh, I, 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 um, I'm, I'm pressed here to, 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 to really conclude. But thanks to Dr. Arfan and Ms. Fatima. And uh, on, on behalf, I'm just uh, seeing, I'm, I'm getting lots of messages now. Uh, just in, in the interest of time, uh, time, I would like to thank Esqua, Mr. Tayyip Dijani. Thank you very much. I know he was keen to, 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 to really thank everybody. The representative from IDB, sorry, I will not give you the floor also. So uh, we'll, uh, as, uh, as to stick to the schedule, we need to conclude with uh, Dr. Ahmed uh, al marihi for one minute, please. I will give it back to you so you can uh, yani, uh, just uh, tell us what's next and maybe uh, conclude uh, the, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Of course, I want to thank Sayyid Irfan and Sayyid Fatma for what they have and their experience في اندونيسيا وتركيا كما الشكر طبعا موصول للبنك الاسلامي للتنميه متمثلا في سعد دكتور رامي جزاك الله خير على هذه كذلك الاداره والاسف طبعا وهنا يتضح حقيقه اهميه الحوار الدولي في دور التنميه الاجتماعي وتاتي مشاركه الجميع في تاكيد هذا هذا اهميه هذا التمويل وامكانيه تنفيذه وهذا سوف طبعا يساعد كثير على ايجاد الاليه الدوليه وتنفيذها. 
فهمية الحوار تكمن في احتواء الجميع بالمشاركة بالتجارب الناجحة والوصول إلى هدفنا المنشود الكبير وهو توفير الحياة الكريمة لأولئك الذين هم في أمس الحاجة لها طبعا التحديات كثيرة وكبيرة ولكن كل ندوة فعلا نجد أن هناك أمل وأمكانية من تحقيق هدفنا بوجود حقيقة شركاء من كافة أنحاء العالم بخبراتهم وكذلك إخلاصهم معنا طبعا أتمنى توفيق للجميع وسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى العلي القدير أن يتقبل منا ومنكم وكل عام وأنتم بخير بعيد الأضحى المبارك مقدما وشكرا شكرا لكم جميعا شكرا جزيلا حياكم الله جميعا شكرا It was a pleasure, really. Thank you very much, Paul. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Rami, can I catch you? Uh, could we take a group photo, if you don't mind? Ah, you want a group photo? See, this is the organizer. You were killing me to, to conclude, and now you want a group photo? OK, if everybody is still around, please uh, <laughs> uh, smile, smile, smile and for open the button. camera. Smile for the camera, please, uh, the, the, as much as uh, you can, OK? Is this good? Anybody else would like to turn on the camera? Is also uh, welcome, please, to go ahead and uh, be with us. Uh, uh, but you have to be smiling, otherwise we're gonna cut your, uh, we're gonna Photoshop your uh, picture. Please smile. Thank you very much. Are you satisfied, Mr. Yusuf? <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Assalamu alaikum. Thanks to everyone. Thank you. Alaikum Assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.